The main bearing caps are held in place by four fasteners, two vertical studs with nuts and two lateral bolts that install through the sides of the engine block. Begin removal of the main bearing caps by loosening the lateral left bank screws. Then loosen the right bank screws. The bearing cap stud nuts are hydraulically tensioned. Using the jack assembly, pull the studs with the specified pressure. When the studs are stretched this way, it relieves the tension on the nuts and they can be loosened by hand. With the vertical stud nuts removed, finish the procedure by removing the side screws. When reinstalling bearings and caps, lubricate the bearing surfaces with engine oil or white grease and lube the lateral bolt threads and under the bolt heads with engine oil. The sides of the main cap are designed to allow installation in only one direction. When installing main caps, make sure that you position the step side of the cap toward the left bank, A bank of the engine. The straight side of the cap faces the right bank, B bank side of the block. Assemble cap nuts hand tight. Torque right bank side screws to 100 newton meters. Hydraulically tension the bearing caps using the two-step process specified in the chart shown previously. If all the bearings are being replaced, start with cap zero and work in order towards the free end of the engine. Tighten the right bank lateral screws to 350 newton meters and then torque the left bank lateral screws to 350 newton meters. Lock out the engine to prevent starting. Isolate the gas supply. When the coolant temperature falls below 50 degrees centigrade, drain the coolant and oil from the engine. Remove the cylinder head for the cylinder being serviced. The procedure for cylinder head removal is covered in the cylinder head section of this program. Next, remove the crankshaft inspection cover for the cylinder being serviced. Cover the piston with a lint-free cloth and remove the anti-polishing ring. Use a three-leg puller and slide hammer if necessary. Engage the barring device at the flywheel housing and rotate the crankshaft to a position that gives access to the four cap screws that retain the connecting rod cap. Through the access hole, loosen but do not remove the four cap screws that retain the rod bearing cap. Engage the barring device and rotate the engine until the cylinder being worked on is approximately 30 millimeters away from top dead center. Insert the mandrel of the liner removal tool into the combustion chamber portion of the piston. Secure the two half flanges over the mandrel and liner. Make sure the lip on the inside diameter of the half flanges engages the extraction groove of the liner and the flange cutout aligns with the bottom of the multiduct. Then secure the spring clips and tighten down the lower threaded collar. Finally, tighten the smaller upper collar to lock the tool in position. Do not use the liner removal tool to break the liner free of the block. Slowly turn the crankshaft to top dead center. Crankshaft rotation will gradually lift the liner, piston, and rod as a unit.
Support the connecting rod cap and remove all four cap screws. Lift the connecting rod cap and screws out of the block. If necessary, mark the cylinder number on the cap and on the bearing tang so that it can be reinstalled in the same location. Attach a sling and hoist to the liner removal tool and lift the piston and liner assembly clear of the engine block. Caution. When removing the liner tool, make sure that the piston crown does not go past the top edge of the liner. If this happens, the top piston ring will catch in the seat for the anti-polish ring and the piston will be locked in the liner. Carefully remove the liner lifting tool and extract the piston from the bottom of the liner. Inspect the interior walls of the cylinder liners for wear or damage. Replace any liners that show signs of wear or glazing. Inspect the outer walls of the liner for any cavitation. Deposits that can be removed are not a reason to replace the liner. Check the liner to ensure that it is dimensionally okay to reuse. The liner should be tested for straightness and ovality. If the liner dimensions vary more than the allowable amount, the liner must be replaced. When putting a rod and piston assembly together, the piston skirt has a cutout on both sides for the cooling nozzle. The skirt can be installed either way. The piston crown must be installed so that the CTR, center marking, goes towards the center of the engine. In other words, the side of the crown stamped CTR is the side installed near the multiduct. When joining the rod to the piston crown, align the rod so that the oil drilling in the rod big end faces towards the outside of the block away from the CTR mark in the crown. Install the rings in their proper grooves on the piston. Note the top marks on the rings and install them so the top marking faces up. Rotate the rings so the end gaps are 120 degrees apart. Install the oil control ring so that the joint in the ring expander is opposite the gap in the oil control ring. Apply a film of oil to the inner wall of the liner and a generous coating of oil to the piston and rings. Install the piston ring compressor on the piston, invert the liner, and slide the piston into the liner. Do not remove the piston ring compressor. It prevents the piston rings from locking in the anti-polish ring recess in the liner. Lay the piston and liner assembly on its side and install the piston and liner lifting tool. Then remove the ring compressor. Install three new O-rings on the liner. Place the upper bearing shell into the connecting rod. Place the lower bearing shell in the rod cap. Lubricate both halves of the bearing with clean engine oil. Apply a bead of non-setting zero-tolerance sealing compound to the liner counter bore. Using the engine barring device, Turn the crankshaft until the crank pin for the cylinder being installed is at top dead center. Apply a coating of silicone grease to the liner O-rings. Using the sling and hoist, position the piston, rod, and liner assembly over the opening in the block 
and slide the assembly into position. Install the rod cap onto the rod and tighten the bolts hand tight. Bar the engine over so that the liner is drawn down onto the block. Remove the liner installation tool. Torque the rod cap bolts using the procedure given in the service literature. Use a crisscross pattern and torque the bolts in three steps. First to 50 newton meters, then 120 newton meters, and finally to 220 newton meters. Install a new anti-polish ring and replace the crankshaft inspection covers. Fit a new head gasket set and reinstall the cylinder head following the procedure given in the cylinder head section of this program.